The Mayor of London has consistently made this argument. I think clean air is a human right, not a privilege. Sadiq Khan's plan to deliver this is ULES, the ultra-low emission zone. Within ULES, people who drive older, more polluting vehicles are charged £12.50 a day. It was introduced back in 2019 in central London. It was expanded in 2021. And now there are plans to expand again, to cover this area, to include 5 million more people from the 29th of August. And that's meeting opposition. There have been protests against the expansion. ULES cameras have been vandalised and it's become political too. Sadiq Khan is from the Labour Party. His predecessor as mayor was Boris Johnson, a Conservative. It was Mr Johnson who announced the introduction of ULES in 2015. But he doesn't want this expansion. Sadiq Khan's odious, unjustified tax on driving the new ULES charge he wants to bring in from August. These days, Boris Johnson's a former Prime Minister and a former MP. And in late July, the constituency of Uxbridge and South Ryslip held a by-election to replace him. It's an area in West London that's affected by ULES's expansion. And the victorious Conservative candidate opposes it. He says that's why he won. Sadiq Khan has lost Labour this election and we know that it was his damaging and costly ULES policy that lost them this election. And on ULES making the difference, the leader of the Labour Party, Sir Keir Starmer, agrees. The mayor needs to reflect on it, but uh, because it was the reason we didn't win in Uxbridge. Sources close to Sadiq Khan told the BBC he was in constructive listening mode. But while the mayor may be listening, he hasn't sounded like a man about to change tack. The decision to expand the ultra emission zone uh, was, was a tough one, but it's the right one. Why? Because every year across our city, roughly speaking, 4,000 people die prematurely. That's a reference to this report by Imperial College London. It was commissioned by the mayor and it estimated that in 2019, the equivalent of around 4,000 deaths in London could be attributed to air pollution. This calculation hasn't been repeated for the years since. And if that's an estimate of the impact of air pollution, Sadiq Khan argues it's particularly felt beyond central London. Those who live in outer London are more likely to have asthma than other parts of our city. Those that live in outer London uh, die more because of uh, the toxic air. Now, overall, levels of pollution in outer London are lower than in central London. However, as we've heard, Imperial College has looked to estimate the number of deaths caused by air pollution and it concludes the greatest burden falls in outer London boroughs. It says this is mainly due to the higher proportion of the elderly in these areas. And on asthma, one charity has released data showing 24 out of the 30 GP surgeries with the highest rates of asthma prevalence are in outer London. And the mayor has a broader point too. In April, City Hall declared that every borough in London exceeds World Health Organization limits for toxic pollution. Now, WHO limits are stricter than the UK's legal limits. And almost all of London is forecast to meet the UK's limits, ULES expansion or not. Nonetheless, Sadiq Khan is asking this question. If it's good enough for those in central London, why isn't it good enough for those in outer London? And Mr Khan is hearing a lot of replies, not least from Bexley and four other councils, which triggered a judicial review over the expansion. And they argue it's a major concern for Londoners. I don't think we've ever had an issue like this that has actually garnered so much attention. A YouGov poll last year recorded 51% of Londoners said they support the ULES expansion. 27% said they opposed it. And those Londoners who oppose the expansion highlight a number of reasons. One being that they don't believe this expansion will actually make much difference. So the impact expected on air quality is very small. Almost no change in PM2.5 particulates. Only a 1.5% roughly reduction in nitrogen dioxide, which is a very small change in air quality. Those figures come from an independent report that was commissioned by the mayor. But Mr Khan argues even low percentage changes will deliver benefits, as does this air quality expert. Any reduction, you know, people talk about targets, but any level of air pollution uh, will affect human health. 
Sadiq Khan also highlights independently assessed data that shows central London nitrogen dioxide levels. They are 46% lower than they would have been without ULEZ. And if opponents remain concerned about how much impact this will have, they're also concerned that this impact will come at too much of a cost. There is cross-party support to tackle air pollution in outer London, which we strongly agree with. The problem with the ULEZ expansion is it t concentrates the cost of the policy on those least well off, least able to afford it. Now, it's true that those in outer London are, on average, less well off than in inner London. It's also true that car owners on lower incomes are more likely to have a vehicle that isn't compliant. Public transport's part of the equation too. It's less comprehensive in outer London. Sometimes cars are needed. But the vast majority of cars in outer London are ULEZ compliant. Transport for London data based on traffic cameras puts the figure at 90%. Other data puts it at 84%. That though still leaves thousands of people who have a non-compliant vehicle. I've got a Volkswagen Touran which will run itself into the ground. I don't need to be replacing it. But thanks to the mayor, can't drive it off my drive. Not that is, unless the daily charge is paid. And if people do decide to change their vehicle, there is some help. A £2,000 scrappage scheme for non-compliant cars is available primarily to those on benefits. And when these two concerns are put together, that the expansion won't have much of an impact and that it's an unreasonable cost, some critics, including the man who proposed the original ULEZ, have reached this conclusion. Nothing to do with air quality, everything to do with mayor Khan's, the Labour Mayor Khan's bankrupt finances. The Mayor's finances aren't bankrupt, nor a transport for London's. But TfL's finances have been under pressure, most recently after Covid brought a huge drop in fare revenues. But this year, the TfL board says it's on track to deliver an operating surplus of £79 million. And we've heard this from Sadiq Khan. The ULES is there to address the health consequences of uh, air pollution and uh, climate change. It's not a money-making device. But in the short term, it will be making money. TfL forecasts that the expanded ULES will make £200 million a year in the first two years. However, as people adapt, more and more cars will be compliant and projections show that income will fall sharply, with no overall profit by 2027. In other words, it will make money in the short term, but not, we're told, in the long term. And while London grapples with how to address air pollution, so do many cities. In England, several, such as Birmingham, charge non-compliant vehicles for entry. In Scotland, Glasgow has banned certain polluting vehicles from the city centre. Further afield, dozens of cities like Paris, Madrid and Oslo all have restrictions of some kind. These zones all operate in different ways and provoke different views and together their impacts been reviewed. Overall our review of all the available evidence says that low emission zones and congestion charging zones can improve cardiovascular health and reduce road traffic injuries. But some are not convinced that this is the way to do it. Manira Wilson's the Liberal Democrat MP for Twickenham in South West London she says, I and most Londoners agree that we must clean up London's toxic air, but this is simply not the right time to add more pressure on people's wallets. Sadiq Khan, though, remains convinced it is the right time and the right thing to do, that it can't wait, that it is worth doing. All of that may soon be put to the test.